Hi everyone, today we'll be talking about finding the nth largest element in k sorted arrays. So the problem is quite simple. We have k arrays and all of them are sorted. What you need to do is you need to find the nth element which might be this element over here in the fastest time possible. Right. So one of the brute force approaches is to just take all the arrays, sort them and then choose the kth element uh, which is pretty dumb so we won't look into that. Another approach that you can use is actually taking a small procedure from merge sort. It's taking all these arrays together and then finding the kth largest by just checking uh, what's at the top of these arrays. What I mean by that is let's take the first element of each array. You find the smallest which will take you k iterations. Let me just uh, keep it simple, keep orders out now. So k iterations now, you get the smallest element. And uh, for the next element, you need k more iterations. And so on and so forth. Till you have n in your hand. Alright, so this is going to take you n into k iterations because these are n in number and so o n k is pretty bad you can do slightly better actually by keeping a heap of the top k elements and then you know maintaining that data structure when you get the smallest you remove the smallest and when you get a new element you insert that into the heap so that will take you k plus log k plus log k and this is n minus 1 times this is the first time so that will be uh, once so essentially you will be left with k plus n minus 1 log k which is uh, asymptotically n plus k no it's n log k plus k This is okay, but uh, maybe it's not. I mean, it's, it's pretty bad even now. So what we really want to do is find the kth largest in something like log n time. So what we are going to be doing is using some sort of binary search. You can guess that there might be some binary search involved because these arrays are sorted and you want a particular index from these arrays. So let's say that we have uh, these arrays. I'm just going to have four of them. And this is our last one. And we are looking for the kth largest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign them lengths, which is the size of the arrays, which is L1, L2, L3, L4. And let's say L3 is the largest uh, array that you have. So you go to the center of L3, very similar to binary search, you go to the center of L3. And you pick this element and binary search it on all other arrays. Why? Well, because it's going to give you information about ordering. So let's say the, this element uh, after binary search gives you an index of this. So binary search, remember, is searching for an element in an array. But what binary search also gives you is the index at which that element should have been present. So if, if you use Java or I think most libraries will give you a negative index in case the element does not exist but there is some relation of the index it's returning it is related to where it should have been put in which is called the insertion point let me write this large so insertion point is where it should have been let's say the insertion point of the first array for this element is here for the second array, we have somewhere on the right, and for the third array, we have somewhere in the center. So these are the positions you got using binary search on these three arrays. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to take the sum of all indexes less than and greater than this index for all the arrays. So let's say this index is i1, this is i2, 
this of course is our uh, source so we don't take that and this is i3 these are indexes mind you not the values so all elements which are lesser than this particular element lie over here 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 and here so in fact to simplify let's, let's keep this i4 and let's take i3 um, so we, we see that uh, these are the indexes which are smaller than this in element if we sum them all up then we get i1 plus i2 plus i3 plus i4 as the number of elements which are less than this given element similarly you can you can just do uh, l1 minus i1 plus l2 minus i2 plus l3 minus i3 plus l4 minus i4 as the indexes which are which are greater so i'll, I'll just mark greater with a circle of red and lesser is with a circle of blue that's what we have the important thing where does k lie if k is less than this number this number is equal to let's say uh, lower so capital l and this number is let's say greater so capital g and so we are left with three conditions either k is less than l or k is equal to l or k is greater than l if k is less than l then we can say that the element that we are looking for lies within these ranges the ones marked by the black arrows because those are the ranges of uh, all elements which are less than the element that we are looking at right now similarly if k is greater than l then the element lies in the ranges marked by the blue arrows because the element that we are looking for is of an index greater than l which is which are all these elements combined the black ones combined and if you're lucky then you'll have k equal to l which means this is the element you were looking for you happen to land up right where you wanted to so once we are done with this let's say we find k is greater than l all right so we don't need to look at these elements at all the ones marked by the black arrows and we just remove them In fact, we don't even need to look at these elements because they are uh, less than or equal to L. So, less than or equal to, yeah, so we can remove these two. And now you see, we have the same old problem for smaller arrays. So, we have broken down our earlier problem to a smaller problem. And of course, you can go on performing the same operation on these smaller arrays till you get the element that you're looking for, till k is actually equal to l. So we have found a recursive solution to the original problem where we break it into smaller problems like this uh, with a particular overhead of obviously breaking it into smaller problems. So what is that overhead? Let's do some time complexity analysis for this. One pointer is that I've been talking about the nth largest in k sorted arrays and that's not what we have been talking about till now it's, it's the kth largest actually in n sorted arrays so the variable names got interchanged uh, and there's also another thing that if you have uh, k greater than l then when you're looking for you're, you're looking amongst the indexes which are greater than the elements that you have found you need to uh, actually update k so k becomes k minus l similar to how you can think in uh, in binary search so uh, your middle becomes the new low so similar to that is the index that you're searching for is updated by subtracting with l okay so now we are ready for the time complexity analysis so time complexity analysis for this is going to be fun uh, we have these arrays let's let's just draw them clearly so we have four of these arrays and yeah clearly <laughs> uh, and we take the largest array, take the middle. Let's say you're really, really unlucky. 
let's say all the elements that you got after taking this element and finally searching were these. All right. That's terrible. But the thing is, if again assume that uh, you have k is greater than n, that's bad, but you got rid of one element from each array and you got rid of half the elements from this array. What does that mean? Well, in each iteration, you're getting rid of half the elements in the largest array. Even in the worst case, to get rid of half the elements from all the arrays, you need at most n operations. Why? Well, because if this is now not the largest array and you go to the largest one, you remove half the elements from there and so on. So if you had e elements in the start and you're removing half the elements from the uh, from each array, then in n operations, you will have reached e by two elements only. At most, you can have those many elements after uh, n chops of the largest. So we went to e by two in just n operations. Another thing to notice is that uh, the, num the complexity of, of each operation is log, which is the binary search factor, log of L average into the number of arrays that we have. So that is into N. So this, this is just one operation, let's, let's keep this aside. And this is aside. This is the number of operations you need for, uh, for going from E elements to E by two elements. Now, this is a very common pattern. If you have E elements, and if you, if you have E elements and you know, you just have one element, then you immediately give the answer. So what we are going to be doing is divide E by two up to the point that it becomes one. So it's E changes to E by two, changes to E by four, changes to E by eight, all the way to just one. So what that means is that E raised to the power, uh, divided by two raised to the power X, there exists some number for which this becomes one, which tells us two raised to the power X, you know, putting it on the right hand side is equal to E which in turn tells us that x is equal to log e to the base 2. x is equal to log e to the base 2. That's interesting. So in these many operations, we can get rid of all the elements. And each operation is going to cost you n. So n log e to the base 2 into doing binary searches on n elements. So that is into n into log of L of average. So in turn, this becomes n square log 2e. Uh, L average, you know, is less than obviously the sum of the elements. So uh, it will be, I think, e by n but you, you don't need to get into that. We can just say, fine, take the worst case scenario. You're not taking L average, we're just taking E, which is much bigger. So complexity analysis still holds. So now it's log E into log E. This constant factor can also be gotten rid of because we are doing uh, order analysis. So order of E. Uh, this is squared. So finally, we have come to the conclusion that the time that we need to do this kind of operation is order of n square log e the whole square. And that's how we find the kth largest in n sorted arrays. So this was one of the more interesting problems that I came across uh, from a sports problem called m kth num. I'll just put that in the description below. Uh, in case you're looking for more algorithms or data structures, you could subscribe. Uh, hopefully, I'll be also doing some VTA tutorials for, for some code shift problems soon enough. So, I'll see you then. Thanks.